here on Hoops Adjacent. Last week, we had Mike Brown. This week, we got Jamal Mosley from the Orlando Magic, baby. Yeah. Up, the so resurgent hot. Orlando Magic, Marcus Thompson. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> With oh, this my shirt. goodness. You got everybody talking, Jamal, your squad, 12 and 4. But as you know, because y'all were doing it second half of last year, the defensive piece, my God, y'all are – disruptive you know what i'm saying and, and it's bullying. i know it's my design but it's uh, yeah just bullying but it's still, people see i'm sure it's fair it's right. uh you know it's what it's the it's our identity and that's what we've yeah. talked about from from day one like it's who we are it's the, the the guys we have that are capable of doing it and you got a bunch of guys that want to defend they want to sit down and guard you have three guys that looking i want to make the all defensive team guys like jonathan isaac's like i want to try you can look at try to get defensive player of the year Guys like that that want to defend and you have the pieces in place, it 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 does wonders for you know the defense. How do you how do you find guys in this era that want to defend? It is so hard to find guys that want to do that on a regular basis. Well, you know, my credit goes to Jeff and his group for the for the guys that they bring in. They bring in guys that are capable with length to defend basketball IQs that understand the game. So even if you're not as physically capable at times, you understand positioning, you understand where to be on the floor. And then the concepts that we put in place, we don't treat it like rocket science, you know, sit down. Can you guard your man? When, are you going to be there and your help early? The, the ability just to break down and be in a stance. Uh, those are little things that kind of get overlooked, but we have guys that are willing and wanting to do it. You know, this defense thing is so like, tricky because you know nowadays it's about getting a bucket man everybody want to get a bucket like mm -hmm. when you were building this because you know this didn't start this year and right. if anybody watched if anybody watched the magic y'all been this foundation has been set for a while when you when you think of like the building blocks like wh where do you start from uh because now the culture is there a guy steps in like he already know you better mm -hmm. lock up like where did that begin? I know you had some veterans like Gary Harris at the beginning. Like, how do you build from the beginning a good defense? Well, you you listen to what they've been through. You, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned Gary because he talked about how good they were, you know, when he was with Denver, you know, to sit, being able to sit down and guard and how much a pressure can you apply to the guards and get away with it, right? How how early can you help, you know, on defense on the on the as the low man as protecting the rim. And the great part about it, too, is that we've always, you know, listened to our analytic team in a lot of ways and said, what are the things that we can be good at and that helps take away from what other teams do? And that, that, that's a big portion of it. It's, a, you know, collaboration and communication with everybody on board. So we're all like, man, you know, me and D.A., we've talked about the magic. We're Last year, we like, yo, this is coming. Do you feel like we're here or are you one of them like, man, we still ain't there yet? Like we still ain't done nothing yet. Well, being in the league for this long and knowing the way the ups and downs and the flows of the league happens, you just say you stick with what you're doing. And I leave it at that, you know, I be because I think you start to think you arrived and you're humbled quick. Right. You tar start to think you're too far down and you can you can beat yourself down. So I think with us, since the moment we've arrived as a coaching staff and what Jeff and his team have put in place is we've been the same. We've had the same joy in every practice. We work the same way every single day. I had to kick guys out of the gym when we were 22 and whatever, and I'm still having to kick guys out of the gym to get some rest when we're winning games in this way. So the culture in which we've created it has not changed because it's about these guys. Man, come on, D.A. I need him to take his shirt off and go crazy. Like, yo, I told you I was nice. That's what I need. I need to, I need you standing on the scores table somewhere, like and right? believe you know what I'm saying. Give, give him the give you him the pat this. Come on, coach. Give him that pat pat. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now, you will not get that. I, was... <laughs> I wanted to go back to on, on what you, you talked about with the analytics thing because I think that's so it's so vital. Your buy-in is obvious, mm -hmm. but the translation some it sometimes gets lost in translation between the people in analytics who most of whom are well-meaning and they're like, we just want to help the team win. We're here are numbers we think will help the team win. But you know, sometimes players ain't trying to hear that from somebody in a jacket. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, so how, how did that communication get 
passed along to the players for them to go, okay, we'll try that because because this does make sense. You have to give it to them. I think what – and mind you, our analytic team is great. They do a tremendous job of breaking it down to where I can understand it, and that's, and that's special. So – they tell you what is effective, like where are we giving up shots? What can we take away? And are we capable of doing it? Uh, is this a good shot for the team to, to shoot against us? And there's some luck, obviously, in certain things, but they were able to break it down to where we could see where our area was effective. Is that, is that better for us being a switching lineup or staying in our coverages um, and who's in coverage is better? And then there's the eye test that you, you never forget the eye test. And so you have to see if it matches up. And being able to match a lot of these things up is what's helped us. You know who, uh, like, really kind of embodies Orlando Magic basketball? And I know he's out right now, but uh, Wendell Carter Jr., man. Yeah. That dude, he's like, I mean, he's, like, not small, obviously, but he's not hes not a seven-footer. But, man, that, that's, like, a solid dude. Like, he ain't scared of nothing. Uh -huh. Like, you, you kind of built this thing on a dude who got that kind of, like, cut from that certain cloth, right? just guys that are capable of doing a little bit of everything, you know, defensively, I can go, he can guard a one, he can guard a five, you know, we can, he's chased guys off pin downs. He switched in the pick and roll offensively. And that's the thing about this team as well, is that you got guys that make decisions. You have IQs, you have basketball IQs on the floor. So to, to that credit is that when you don't have the athletic skill, you have an IQ that can put you in position to do the right thing. Yeah, I, I am so glad, Marcus, they didn't give up on Suggs. I'm sitting there going, I know this kid is going to be a good pro. I know he's going to be a good pro. <laughs> like, they don't he's give up on this kid. <laughs> Who be giving up on people who are like six months into their career? That's what I'm like, saying. What, is, what are we doing anyway? Right? Yeah. Right? Right? I was you, so, I was you so have glad. To give these guys, you have to give each guy an opportunity to step into their journey because it's their story. It's their journey. You got to let them be and meet them where they are in that moment. And I think that's the part, if you if we say we're about growth and development and helping these guys get better, that's our job as coaches is to teach. And so you have to meet them where they are and help them grow into what you, you could think they wanna become as well as where you see them going. Right, so who is your who is your development team superstar, your staff superstar, who's the well, guy that? It's tough, I'm telling you, our staff is unbelievable. And so we got from from top down, it just goes like from our assistant coaches, you know, Jesse Mermis, Brett Brillmeyer, Dale Osborne, Randy Gregory, Lionel Chalmers, Tay, Tay Carter. We have a development team of guys that just gets it done. Like these guys are video room and court and they're working their tails off. And because of the background of player development and what I what I've saw, you know, you know how to help these guys get better to help the players get better. So it's about growing everybody. It's not just the players in, in general. It's right. got to be uh, Rand, it's got to be uh, uh, Randy Gregory because he's also playing defensive end for the 49ers. So uh, <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> imagine, imagine two jobs like that. Man, boy, that he's boy pretty, good. He's nice <laughs> like that. I'm gonna... <laughs> very nice. No, the your Randy yeah. Gregory for us is is, is is pretty awesome. Does a great job with our guys. <laughs> Coach, who's the who's the player who you uh? You know, obviously, the, they're all talented, but who's the player you felt like, man, over this last year, two, three years, whatever, like I've really seen this 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 cat, this person come a long way, this like professionalism come a long way, this player come a long way. Like who's the one who had you rolling your eyes at first and now you're like, yeah, this is my dog? You just mentioned him. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, because I would guess Cole, but yeah, that makes sense. Oh, I mean, it's 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 Cole is no Cole is, is great, and they they are all great. That's the thing that it's it's hard to pinpoint one because it's like you have a piece of from each guy that's doing something. You're like, wow, you get that, right? Like Jalen took time. The game started to slow down with him. He started to register things, realize how good he could be defensively, and embraced it. Cole understanding how good he can be offensively as and a playmaker and then guarding the way he's guarded and accepting where he is, you know, coming off the bench growth. Like that's what this team has done. They've all ex accepted their responsibility to the team with being able to thrive in who they are. I, I want to get back to Suggs for a second. Cause I'm just, I'm just obsessed with this <laughs> because 
I talk, I mean, because I, I just remember before the draft and just talking to people who were on USA Basketball and just they said, this is like one of the great leaders we've mm -hmm. ever seen of all the kids that have come through this program. He's like the best leader we've ever had, you know, and so knowing his background, his football background and all of that, taking Gonzaga to the final, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm like, yeah. no, yeah. but then you had to tell him, oh, by the way. We're gonna move you off the ball now. Yeah. <laughs> and I just like I just wonder like how how did you see that that would be better for him, but still allow him to do the things that he's good at? You just mentioned his leadership, but it's also his ability to understand what winning is. And he's won everywhere he's been: football, basketball, yeah. college, AAU. He's won. And I think what we they're we're, they're putting together is guys that understand what winning is. And winning is doing things that may not be comfortable for you in that moment, but you know it's the right thing for the team. And that's what each one of these guys has done. They register, listen, I know how good I can be. I can probably give you 25, 30 a night, but I also know in that same breath, that might not lead to what we are trying to do. And I think that's the great part of the characters that we have here. In, in the process of building a team, like, is, is do you find patience is tougher to come by now? Because, I mean, I'm, I'm sure they can smell that they can beat anybody, right? They can taste like we're as good as anybody. But you've built this thing, right? Is it you find patience is since you're closer now, you're better? Is it harder or is it easier because you've already been through it and you learned well, it? It's a nonstop, you know, lesson, you know, just constantly teaching. It's for our guys. That's why I keep giving praise to our coaches because they keep explaining to these guys every scenario is going to be different and being able to go through it at your learning you're learning when you win you're learning when you lose so how do we do that every single day and the patience piece i really think our guys get it they know how confident how good they can be but it's also the other side of how do you handle success that's the biggest piece they're not ready, huh, D.A.? They're about, they about to turn up now. They got to keep them off the club. You know what I'm saying? You got to keep them, like, off, keep them off the gram, you know. Like, you know <laughs> it is amazing that in this day and age, just all the things you got to deal with that have nothing to do with basketball. You know, but I just don't. <laughs> the great part about this group, they're so connected. They, they hold each other's feet to the fire. They hold each other accountable. And so yeah. when we're talking to them as coaches, they're hearing that, but then they're also being, it's being reinforced by the next person, the guy next to him. We're celebrating yeah. each other as well as yeah. holding each other accountable. So Jamal, well, I want to ask you, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Marcus. Well, I, I wanted you, I was hoping you could kind of contextualize, like what's, what's it taken for Marco Fultz to get back, to get here? Like what, how, how tough has this guy been? What kind of resilience have you seen? I mean, a lot of us don't know the story, the full. We know bits of it, but you've seen it behind the scenes. Like, how amazing is it that he's made it this, to this point? He, he is one of the most joyful, faithful, um, committed human beings I've been around. Uh, his care factor for the people around him is like nothing else I've seen. Uh, he cares about the guy next to him, and that, that's what it embodies. And then his work ethic to get back right um whenever there's an injury or whatever the case may be is he's a he's a workhorse and that's the great part about him he brings a sense of joy every time he steps in the building every time because he doesn't that that's what these guys lean on is that you, you can't take it for granted you can't can can we get a little bit more into that because that is the one of the things mark because i thought i not that you couldn't, it was a challenge. I thought it was going to be a challenge for you. And it may, and it probably still is a challenge. I was like, I love this team, but they got so many point guards. Like, like how can you keep everybody happy? You know, it's just it's human nature. The guys want the rock. That's what, so that's their identity. That's what they grew up as. I'm the guy with the ball in my hand. So how did you get Suggs and Markel and Cole and now Anthony Black to say, okay, maybe we can't all play to one at the same time, but we're all going to contribute. You just hit it, David. It's uh, you reframe it. You have to reframe it because everybody, everybody outside says, look, how do they do that? Because these guys are this. But I look at it like we can be pretty darn good because we have a bunch of high IQ decision makers that know what to do, 
And now with our coaches doing a great job of putting the concepts of what it is we want to do and how we can attack mismatches, how we can play with pace, how we can push the ball faster, how we can switch multiple positions because we have size. That's to our advantage. And, and the guys have bought into that. That's what our advantage is. And we do it by committee. It's not just Franz, Paolo, Jalen, and, you know, Wendell or AB. It's everybody that's stepping in is ready to go, ready to go. We haven't even talked about Franz yet. Goodness gracious. <laughs> oh my goodness. Squad <laughs> loaded, huh? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so how have how have you seen his game evolve over the last couple of years to where he can take this high usage that he's on now or higher usage that he's on now? Well, you know, the best part with this group is that they they all take care of their bodies. So there's recovery, there's rest. They understand the, the load in which we're, they're going to be given. Uh, and it always, to me, comes back to that basketball IQ. They They know how to play. You know, we've given them the why we do what we do. You know, this is what we do. And now they understand how to do it. And I think that's the biggest piece with this group. They're figuring that out on on their own term. Like the coaches, you can give them give them keys and whatever it is you need them to do, but they've got to grab a hold of it. And that and they've grabbed a hold of what it is that we're asking them to do. And so with Franz, he's probably got one of the highest basketball IQs of anybody I've seen in a while. Uh, he just reads the game, sees the game, both offensively and defensively. I'm most proud of how he's just turned this corner defensively, taking on defensive challenges, guarding whoever's necessary, and doing it the right way. And where, again, where, it's getting – oh, go ahead, go ahead, Marcus. Where do you see Paolo's career going? Do you see him – I mean, obviously basketball is so much more positionless now, but is the – what you see from him, what he's going to be, or is like, are you working towards something as he builds his career while you build the team? I mean, Paulo, in so many ways, hasn't even scratched the surface. And, and I think because you you talked about Wendell, like embodying so many pieces of what the magic, who the magic are, um, Paulo represents that on, on a different level, right? Like his ability to pass the basketball, score the basketball at a high clip, get to the basket, get to the free throw line, shooting the ball well defending multiple positions with a high, high, high basketball IQ. Like those are things that you don't put a cap on what he's capable of doing and he works at it. And he, and he comes from a phenomenal family that continues to push him. All right. I got to ask you this speaking of Paolo, because I ain't asked you this since how the hell did y'all keep that secret? <laughs> how did y'all keep that secret in this day and age? <laughs> <laughs> our guys they detail their work they detail their work when it comes down to it knowing to do the right thing at the right time and, and like, like i said i give credit to jeff and his group they do a tremendous job of that I yo mean, that, what, that, what? Yeah. nah nah you could you did something like y'all had yeah, right? a super service or something like what nah <laughs> You got, well, you got I, I, I just told you how great our, our analytic team was, what they do, right? And then you put that on top of the scouts that have seen things, talked to people, heard things. like. It, but it were a bit of the ability to keep it in-house and do it the right way is what's and, supposed to be done. And nobody doing Omerta like y'all do Omerta. No, nah, you, you, you need to put out the secret to sell that for fifty nine ninety nine. I need to see a commercial for how to you stop leaks at 2 o'clock in the morning with your face As on many like, wanna be GMs your organization are in this, clean, in this right? world. You know what I'm saying? My God, it's, it's remarkable. It's remarkable that y'all kept that it's quiet. Unbelievable, like, yeah. like that just doesn't happen in this league anymore. You know, that's, like that's you used beauty, to. That's the beauty of being able to, to to grow this thing the right way. That's yeah. I think from top to bottom. Do you think it helped being in a market? And I don't mean I'm not saying this is a pejorative at all, but a market like Orlando, where there's Basically, well, there's two. I mean, the soccer team is there, but basically, there's one team in town, and it's the most important thing. And there's not there's not as much competition um, for people's attention that there may have been in other cities, and that would lead a team to say, "Hey, let's make a splash and make ourselves more important by telling everybody what we're going to do." Mm. I, you know, does that make sense? That makes that makes sense, and and I think. That's the beauty of being able to just say you're going to do it the right way. 
you don't you don't you're not doing it for the show you're not doing it for the splash you're doing it to do something sustainable you're doing it for the people the fans that are phenomenal here to say right. you know we're going to grow this thing and we want to do be able to do this for you for a long time because it's what you deserve um you deserve to have it organically done the right way for a long period of time and having a big splash splashes for a moment and then you lose it and then you're looking at oh now what versus we've got a group of young men that are willing to do the right thing play the right way do it by committee and it's what the fans can embrace you know one thing i've come to uh recognize in my my time in, uh, in the bay is what y'all producing in milwaukee man i feel like the, 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 a lot of origin stories starting in Milwaukee. We had Jordan Poole, yeah. you got Kavon Looney, uh, they just got Brandon Pajemski, like, and, and then you got Latrell Sprewell from back in the day. From like, yeah, Karan and, Butler I mean, was from Karan Butler was from Racing. Butler from Racing. Like, you got Anthony uh, Black who, who got you know Milwaukee right? ties. Y'all hooping right? out there, huh? <laughs> I, was born in, I was born in Milwaukee. You was born in Milwaukee, right? Like, how yeah. long did you? When did you leave? Because you, you I was in California. I right? left. I left right around the eighth grade, and then went to California. So I, okay. I, I, I left. I didn't play high school basketball in Milwaukee. Where would you have gone, uh, King and Hamilton? No, I would have gone to actually with uh, my dad and his family. They went to Mesmer, so I'd have probably gone to Mesmer. Okay, okay. yeah, you would have got yeah. cooked by Looney and them, huh? No, my, but my best, my best friends, they they were all at Vincent, so they won a couple state championships at Vincent too. So it's okay. And me and Devin Harris have this conversation a lot. <laughs> man, yeah, you man, know what? I, it's a lot of people from Milwaukee in the league. Yeah. I'm like, this is this is slept on area for hoop. I didn't realize yeah. this. Car Marcus, you know, Karan used to tell me that he played against Tony Romo in high school. He said Tony Romo was nice in high school, like, too. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I would have never pegged that. Are you right? Serious? Tony no. Romo? High, high, high athleticism, high basketball IQ. Yeah. 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 All right, man. Makes Al sense. Along the lines, along those lines, you got to tell me what playing for the Seoul Samsung Thunders was like. What oh, was wow. that like? Oh, wow. <laughs> Speaking of, on that same team, was another guy from uh, Racine was uh, Alex Scales. Alex Scales was on. Okay, Alex, Alex was on that Scales team. Okay, there. so it was it was great. It was a great experience to be able to go overseas and learn learn about the different cultures, how they view the game of basketball, um, just reading and and getting to know different people and different situations and organizations, and it just helps out so much to be able to see the game internationally. And how did you get out of that out of your comfort zone? I'm sure you don't know any Korean going into it, right? Like, like man, he knew Korean you, barbecue. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. They probably don't even have a Korean now that I think about it. <laughs> did they have they just Korean call it barbecue? barbecue. Yeah. They just call it barbecue. They had, they had some great, they had some great food out there, not gonna lie. Oh, it man, was uh, incredible. Yeah. It was it, what it was was just learning to to expand what the game has done for all of us, right? Like it's taken us places we could never even fathom being or going, and embracing that and saying, you know what, it may be out of my comfort zone, but wh why not be able to learn about a different culture, play with different guys, have this experience to be able to take back to family so they can understand what it's like, and that's what yeah. that was that was very important for me. Yeah, yeah. Did you uh any chance you got out to see Coach Prime? I didn't get out there. I'm and I, I'm, I saw, I'm I saw Derek White out there. To, Derek sure went, you know, Chauncey went, all of our guys went back, and it was right at that time. I think I was gonna go to the Colorado State game and I never made it out, but like I just love what he's done for that group of guys. And it's just, it's the, the ability to believe in what you're capable of doing and meeting guys where they are and pushing them to do more. Listen, Marcus, you, you, you out there you for know, a minute? Yeah, you, you know, you know the vibe. You, you you were there what four years, right? You did four years I was there. Four years, yep. Yeah. 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 Yes. So I was I got there on a Wednesday. Yep. And it looked like Boulder, Colorado. Thursday, <laughs> it looked like Boulder, Colorado. Friday, it I know you like Milwaukee. It. <laughs> Saturday, it was straight on New Orleans. It was like. <laughs> 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 Actually, maybe maybe Friday night it started. Friday night was the <laughs> it was hey, wild to witness with my own eyes, like the same was, uh, place. Just the, the energy, the energy is uh, is is, a, is amazing. I, I'm just watching it from afar. The energy is fantastic. Like so good, it's so good for the city, so good for college yeah. basketball, football. I mean, it's just big yeah. time. 
And when he gets his own people in there, it's going to it's, it's happen yeah. when he gets his folks in there. Yeah. Uh, now, I wanted to ask you about, because um, I've talked to Chauncey a million times about Coach Patton and just what you mm. learned from Coach Patton and how you've taken that from in your coaching journey. Oh, man. I mean, Coach Patton was, is you know, like a, a father figure. I mean, the way he pushed us to, to be better, not just on the court, but off the court as men. Uh, I mean, the practices were no joke now, mind you, I'll tell you that. Like that was, there was a level of discipline and work that we were getting in every day that I hadn't seen before. But he also tested your limits on what you know you can do mentally, physically. Uh, he pushed us. I, I obviously still talk to him to this day about all the things that he sees, what he has seen, how we've grown. He just, he's such a special man. And I mean, he's changed the lives of so many young men and he, and he still continues to to this day. How long did it take you to get used to the altitude? Ooh, felt like two years. Mm. I think it sounds like, like you still ain't used to it. Man, I had a flashback right there. <laughs> and you started to talk about it. I started to feel oh, you got a little PTSD up in there. <laughs> started wheezing and everything. <laughs> oh, oh, that's good. Man. Yeah, that had to be uh, had to be something, man. I, I could I don't know how y'all do. I don't know how the Nuggets do it. I know they get used to it, but still, that's. Yeah, I mean, it's an advantage, big time advantage. Yeah. When I was coaching in Denver, that was that was a big time advantage, and George was phenomenal at like we're gonna take advantage of that. We're gonna run. Yeah, we're gonna yeah. run. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of alt altitude, right? Yeah, as this ascension is happening, like, do you get as a coach? Do you get? I like, like that spin. About I like that spin you just. Man, put that out. was good. Yeah. Da that never was recognized good. my was style, good. man. Like, that that was, I gotta give you more love. I gotta give you more love for that, <laughs> that, that transition. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because it's a visual medium. You feel me? Uh, like, how as a coach do you get? I, I know the players get excited about just the prospect of playoff basketball. This is what they've been doing. Do do you get excited about that, or is it important to like kind of keep the steady thing? Because you know it's a it's a different season essentially. It's like another world, and you know you're headed that way. Like, how, how do you approach knowing like, yo, we're a good team, and this is what's next for us? Well, it goes back to never getting too high, never getting too low. You stay the same. Uh, like our body of work stays the same, our attitudes stay the same. Understanding what we have to do night in and night out and it's one game at a time and it sounds so cliche but that's the reality of the nba uh, you could go on a seven game win streak and go on a three game losing streak and you have to stay the same no matter what you're doing and just find out if you're doing the right things of your standard of play then you have to stick with that so not getting too high jumping into anything versus just letting these guys enjoy this moment but knowing we still have a body of work to do Man, you just it's not gonna fall for the man or tailpipe, huh? It just ain't you happening. Know I watched that. I watched, I watched that the other day, so that's probably why I'm jumping on that real quick. I just I thought of it. I'm not gonna fall for it. Like, come on, what you talking about? <laughs> I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. I, there's the utmost of confidence in this group because of what they're capable yeah. of doing. I will say that because each one of these young men works their tail off, and they care about each other. They do it the right way, and they want to continue to get better. And the confidence is growing. And they also know the work that is being put in. I, I said it to them the other day. The words are one thing, but work is a whole different story. You got to be able to put the work in. Yeah. When, when you're when you're constructing this thing, how much are you thinking about? You know, I know everybody wants to win a championship, but we've seen teams get good, and some teams aren't built yeah. for like that playoff life. But it seems like this team is almost specifically designed right. for the postseason for. DN up and Eastern Conference Finals and like that that kind of makeup was that at all factored in or you just like hey this is a winning style of basketball so we're gonna play that or are you thinking I got to get guys ready for a level that they don't even know what's coming yet? You're you're constantly building. You're constantly trying to put them in positions where they they know what they're capable of doing and you you look at the way the roster is constructed and you say okay we have size we have physicality we have guys that can attack the basket we have guys that can sit down and guard multiple positions so it's just helping them understand what they are capable of and then you look at the group and each guy on this roster has been part of some winning somewhere and they so they understand what it, that takes and I'll go back to it like the ability to do it by committee because you have a bunch of guys that understand what it takes in their own role to the team.
Sounds like strength in numbers, Marcus. Strength in numbers. Yeah, y'all need a brand this thing, though. We need some, you know what I'm saying? A little bit more hood right. than Steve Kerr's, though. You know, right, right. right. <laughs> we're doing it by committee. I can tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> the, guys, the guys know it. We are. Like, we. how about we deep out here? There we go. That's it. There you go. We, we deep. deep out cheer. There we go. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Orlando's not ready for it. I'm not ready for that, Marcus. <laughs> I'm a marketing oh, genius, oh, baby. Let's go. Oh <laughs> man, let me. I want to. One of the numbers I love numbers with you guys is I think you know everybody make looks at the the kind of difference between offensive rating and defensive rating, but the number I don't think people look at is that y'all are number one in free throw rate, number one in the league in free throw rate, and I wonder like. Is that again intentional? Is it just, hey, Paolo and Franz can get to the rim and they're going to draw a lot of fouls and we're just going to, we're just going to lean into that, you know, because it lets you set up your defense, right? Without a doubt. And then you got, you have to go back to the reality of what does your roster look like? Like, yeah. What, what do you have? What are you capable of doing? You have guys that are 6'9, six, 6'10, six, can handle the basketball, can get to the basket. Um, you know, they can punish mismatches. So you use that to your advantage. Why would you not use what you have to your advantage versus trying to be like everyone else? We're going to be the best version of us. And that's defensive side of the floor. We're going to do that at a high clip night in and night out because defense travels. It doesn't matter if you're making or missing shots. We have to be able to sit down and guard, which allows us to get back to the offensive side of the floor. Yeah. Did you look at the uh, in, you see the in season tournament as like a maybe a grooming a bit or I, I don't know how, how y'all take it. I thought it was, I, I think it's great. I really do. I think it's so good for the yes because y'all plus twenty two in point differential. I see what you're doing. No, I, mean, I, still, I still think it's great. Regardless, I think the level, the, the competition, the guys looking at the different floors, seeing it, talking because everybody talks. Every the, amongst the yeah. peers, everybody's talking. So they're like, hey, what are you guys? What's your number? What do you got to do? Uh, what you got to win by four, you got to win by six. Oh, yeah. Like yeah, it's yeah. real. Like, and so these guys are talking about it. So, so it creates a, a great excitement for these guys. Okay. okay. And then I'm not going to sit here and lie. Like a lot of the guys are talking about, okay, the trophy and the 500. Like guys. 500. Are, yeah. 500. Yeah. yeah. Like, 500 does matter. It does break through the noise a little bit. It does. It does. I mean, yeah. the fact okay. that you, can, you can say I got a trophy in the middle of the season that that helps propel you. And you're like, oh, I got some change in my pocket. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, listen. Them dudes, like, this dudes with hundred million dollar contracts. Like, hey, man, I want that five hundred. Like, yeah, I'm no, like, I mean, what? They're competitive. They're like, competitive. Nah, they, I get it. Five hundred is yeah. five hundred, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't care who you yeah. are. You get a five hundred thousand dollar check. That means something. <laughs> right, right, right. What you gonna do with your share, Coach? <laughs> <laughs> oh, y'all get it too? Oh yeah, they get a they get a little little slice. Man, y'all better get something, huh? Or hey, hey if if you need they, they need to kick in to you. That's what no, the right. whole team. Right. The, the, the reality is, you take care of the people around us. The people that you know may not get that same amount. You take care of the people that have continued to help build this thing the right way. That's the important yeah. piece. Yeah, that's that's good, man. I hope that I hope that everybody does that league wide because that yep. would be that that's would be point, to yeah. me that would make sense. That would be like okay, at least right. at least some people that you know the guy to get that rebounds every night, yeah. you know, and, and, and don't say what, nothing. Gets that's, a little, little extra. Yeah, everybody's involved in this. That's like yeah. as hard as long as the NBA season is, as hard as it can get. It's the reality that everybody plays a part. I mean, from from the the performance staff to the equipment manager to the to the guys wiping the floor at yeah. at, at, at at Amway, like that plays a big part in everybody's success. Especially like. This will be Christmas time. Y'all gonna be in Vegas holding the cup. You, you know, know what I'm saying? saying? Yeah, that's a nice Christmas bonus. You feel me? Like, yeah, I'll hey, you that Marcus, I'll hey, that Marcus, you are funny, man. You just gotta get on. Man, you know everybody at the win, like, yeah, come on in, fellas. <laughs> come on in. <laughs> I, I think it's great. For, it's great for the game. I, I I really do, man. And the fan, you know, the fan support has been fantastic. Our fans are incredible. All right, coach. Let me get, let's let, let let's get you out of here, man. On this, like, I know it's it's great to be. I mean, look, attention, and I, I know all of us idiots come jumping into your life at this point. Um, but I just wonder, like, what do you tell the guys about handling the success that they've had so far? So, 
I talked about this early and on in our season because we had been up every at halftime for the most part of our games and then teams would start crawling back. And so it was a small glimpse into the window of how do you handle success, right? Because now that you are up at halftime, teams are going to come gunning for you. So you have to reset and do the things that got you the level of success. So to bump into the example of being with a, a good record right now, okay, teams are looking at you a little differently. They're coming for you. So you have to do the things that got you that level of success and do it with a higher sense of attention to detail. And so that's what we've told them. Like, you don't have to be and do anything extra different. You do what got you there, but you have to pay attention to the details in that. Yeah, yeah. I, I just love this, like, new crop of young, like, head coaches right. who don't, like, be in the league that's for, like, right. the next 20 years. Like, y'all, I didn't even, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Ask you about JB. Still, I know that's your guy. JB is your guy. guy. Yeah. Guy. Yeah. And I'm happy for him that's and the success dope, they're man. having. It's great, man. It's great. The, the, it's coaching, right. the coaching group is 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 fantastic. I mean, and, and the great part about it is, and you know, this hasn't always been that for you. The ability that we can all lean on each other. Yeah. And lean on yeah. each other. And, and when things are going amazing and, and when you're trying to figure things out and when you're building, yeah. growing, like you can all lean on each other, which is great. All right, send send West Junior some some love and advice. <laughs> he need it right now. <laughs> I can see him tomorrow, so I'll be able to have a sit down. And yeah, talk that's to right. Him. Yeah. Oh, that's right. You got that. You got that yeah, baseball yeah. series with them, right? Yeah, yeah we got yeah. them twice. We got them twice. Yeah. 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 No, they're they're about they're about three they're about three years behind where y'all where y'all are now. You know, they're just starting it, so it's it's a process, but it's, they'll get there, I think. Growing, it's 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 about how you know getting guys better, continue to grow, and that's what you you do that no matter I think what your record is because that's our job as coaches. I was well, we say, coming now for you. We bring yeah, drama, right? <laughs> all kinds of stuff. We about to make this thing hard. You know how we do. Media coming. We about to start showing right. up. Candles, just parachuting into town trying that. to start yeah. some trouble. <laughs> he ain't called all of a sudden. Hey, can I get you on? I'm like, yeah, you ain't called me in three years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, hey, here we I go. Here we go. <laughs> and so it begins, right? Like, right? No, right. Good. no, you always reached out. So I, I, I appreciate you there, honestly. Like, you've always course, been able to just hit me up on the side to say, just always, support. always. So I appreciate you. Yes, of course. I'm just happy for you, man. All right, y'all. Leave that five star review on Apple, school, uh, Spotify, Google Play, wherever you get this fine American podcast. Leave those five stars and markets. If they can't leave five, what they need to do? Keep it to yourself, you haters. We're going to make you have to score against the Orlando Magic, which you ain't going to be able to do. Man. <laughs> All goes do. strong the week. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Got yeah. another tarantula over there. <laughs> So they some bullies, man. <laughs> <laughs> they some bullies. No shirts, sweat all on you. Like you know what I'm saying? Getting that stank yeah. all over you. 